Hello, just a quick informational video for you this morning. If you happen to work on bicycles, I'm sure you're very familiar with Shimano Hyperglide hubs. Uh, many, many bicycles have these today, and they have for uh, decades, quite honestly. This one is from the 1990s. You'll see that it has splines all are the same width except for one. right here, thinner spline, and then a corresponding wider flat section. And then the hub that fits it has corresponding splines so that it slides right on. Then it has a locking nut with internal threads to hold everything together. Very common. However, if you happen to work on a bike from the early 1980s, you might come across one of these. This is a Shimano Uniglide hub that predates Hyperglide by a couple of years. Shimano only sold these for a few years in the early 80s, so they're not particularly common nowadays. And for a couple of reasons, they're incompatible with Hyperglide hubs. They look very similar though, so what's the difference? Well, notably, two things. You'll notice that all the splines are the same width. These wide splines happen to be the exact same width as the hyperglide splines, but there's no thin spline. They do still use cassettes. So here's a cassette that's uniglide. But instead of the internal locking nut, this one has a special cog that threads onto the outside of the hub. And that's all well and good until you want to change your gearing because you just can't find these anymore. So what do you do? Well, many thanks to uh, the late Sheldon Brown and the team that maintain his website because I was able to convert a modern cassette to fit this. Now this is a six-speed bike. I believe Uniglides were made in five and six-speed. But what I did was bought an eight-speed cassette, modern Shimano components. And you'll see that on an eight-speed, or any of these in fact, there'll be an arrow pointing to a wide spline. This lines up, this corresponds with the wide section right beside the skinny spline on the hub on a standard hyperglide cassette. So what you can do, and what I did first, I skipped a step here, is this will come all together just like a typical cassette, but you'll see there, there's pins. So you can simply drill or hammer those out, leaving you with the loose cogs. At that point in time, you can pick the few that you want to use, and I needed five in my case. It's a six-speed bike, but that outer cog, as I mentioned, is threaded, and that's what holds everything together, so you have to use that one. So I used five of the eight, and you'll see where this arrow is. I simply filed off half of that wider spline. As soon as you do that, a modern cog will fit an old Uniglide cassette. Simple as that. Then all you have to do is 
buy some spacers. Your spacing will definitely be different on an 8-speed or a 9-speed or a 10-speed than would be an old 5 or 6. Just make sure this is spaced appropriately. In this case, this is 3.45 millimeters. I don't think that's exactly what Shimano recommends, but it's very, very close. And you can simply stack them up on here, then use the threaded cog on the end to cap it all together, and you're good to go. That only not only lets you change out your gearing for uh, old legs like mine, but you'll see that these old Uniglide cassettes don't have any ramps on them. Whereas the new ones do. It's because the old Uniglide ones were not indexed. So maybe you've converted your bike to index shifting, maybe you haven't. I have not. But it shifts so much better with these newer style cogs with ramps. One quick note on that though is if you switch from a Uniglide cassette to a hyper to hyperglide you'll have to change your chain as well otherwise uh, your chain that fit the original uniglide will catch on all these ramps and it will want to shift on its own all the time as soon as you buy a modern chain it's excellent so hopefully that will help some of you out there. Probably a very few that are still doing this sort of work on old bikes. But maybe someone. Thank you very much.